Welcome to DXB Today. We have another corking show lined up for you tonight, and this is what's coming up. We have Ash, who went to check out Prototypes for Humanity at Emirates Towers, which is an academic exhibition for innovations. We send Dua down to the Expo City Farms for a special cooking workshop. And we go behind the scenes to meet the crew behind the climate musical Alia at Terraland at COP28. Oh, I'm so excited to be here today because I feel like I'm going to get educated more on COP28 and it's a good thing the theme is education. You know, I feel like growing up, I didn't really have that, you know, that knowledge on how to look after the environment. Did you That's know? true. No, well, but this is it. Like yesterday was an amazing show because I got to know so much about COP28. Uh, but also I like that the youth have got that experience now. Mm. That exactly what you said we didn't have when we were young. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because for us, it was all about academics and we forget that there's more to that in life. Mm -hmm. So tell me, you were saying something earlier about social media and COP28 and all this. Tell totally. You know. you know, I think that we need to learn a way to actually speak to the younger generation. The way that we were taught and received messages isn't exactly how they do. You know, they love their social media. They love their Netflix. They love their shows. So TikTok have actually launched a campaign because of COP28. It's called the hashtag climate action campaign. And what they're doing is they've got experts and scientists from all over the world, like the best of the best from Brazil, Brazil, Japan and the UAE to become people who ensure that there's no misinformation on TikTok about climate change and sustainability. But on top of that, they're actually working directly with influencers to make sure they are educating and, and you know, creating educational content for the younger generation. Oh, that's fantastic. So good. Have you been down there then? No, I haven't, you haven't been. been down there yet. Yeah. It looks mayhem in the best way possible, <laughs> you know? Have you been? No, I haven't been. Have you been? Yeah. I have been to COP28 and the vibe when you get there and just seeing people from all over the world talking about, of course, these very important conversations, mm. it's just mesmerizing. It just gives me flashbacks of Expo. Yeah. Yes. You know, and Expo was the best time ever where people just came together here in the UAE and COP28 is doing exactly the same, but like condensed in one week. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and since we're talking about events, I know there's a very important person who's joining us tonight. Let's find out more about our guest co-host. Hi, I'm James Craven, president of Live Nation and look forward to seeing you all later on on the show. Very much looking forward to having James right here on the sofa with us in just a little bit. But first, Dua went down to the Expo City Farms to take part in a cooking workshop with nature-inspired chefs. Check it out. I am down here at the Expo City Farm checking out a sustainable cooking class where everything that we eat is grown here. So let's check it out. So I am down here at the Expo City Farm and I am joined by the amazing woman that leads the team behind this wonderful operation. So let's find out what's going on. May, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me and these kind words. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about this farm and what you guys grow here? Absolutely. So we have quite a diversity of crops over here. Um, right now we're in the outdoor space of the farm and this is an organic farm. We have common crops like uh, tomatoes and cucumbers and capsicums, but we also have less traditional crops like quinoa and millets and a diversity of desert species, medicinal crops, and native Emirati uh, crops as well. Oh, incredible. So tell us about like how this is such an innovative concept in the world of agriculture and how you brought it right here to us in the UAE. Yeah, so it's a combination of things, to yeah. be honest. So we brought together uh, innovations that we thought would work well for this climate uh, that don't require a lot of resources to grow and that are enhancing and regenerating our natural resources rather than depleting them. So we have the outdoor farms where the soil is um, enriched with compost and biochar, things that help it retain more water and add more nutrients to the plants. We have things in the indoor farms where it's climate controlled, we're able to grow things without soil at all in a hydroponic system, which is just a water-based system that helps us use so much less water than irrigation, 90 to 95% less water. So we're all about water saving. And we're also growing mushrooms over here. 
uh, from coffee, spent coffee grounds. So it's a full circular system where we collect coffee grounds from coffee shops, we grow mushrooms with them, and any waste around, whether it's from the farm itself, or I'll get to the cooking classes next, mm -hmm. or from the cooking classes, all goes to our composter, which is actually just back there. And we take that compost and reapply it to the soil once again. Oh, incredible. So you mentioned cooking classes. What other activities can people find down here at the Expo City Farm? Yeah, so we want to engage our visitors as much as we can. So the simplest one is tours. We're all about tours. People can come in, speak to the experts here, learn more about what we do. We also have programming from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day during COP. From 10 to 11 a.m. specifically, we have workshops targeting younger audiences. So if there are families out there watching, this is the time to bring in the younger people, get involved and get their hands a little bit dirty. And then for the rest of the day, we have panel discussions and talks with experts and of course the cooking classes and the cooking classes we harvest all of the produce from our farm so people get to taste everything that is being grown here understand it better and learn about it a little bit more and enjoy themselves with local international chefs and ultimately get to eat this fabulous uh, food Well, that was absolutely delicious. Get yourself down here to the Expo City Farm where you can actually cook everything that they grow. The first of its kind farm to table concept right here at Expo City Dubai. Nice one, Dua. I look forward to getting the invite to your house because I know you've got some good tips and tricks now. <laughs> now, our next guest is in the studio, is a wonderful person, and he is from a company that is the largest producer of live concerts in the world, promoting live entertainment throughout the Middle East. They're always changing the landscape of events for sustainability-driven concerts. Please welcome the one and only James Craven from Live Nation to the show. Good to see you again, What James. a nice welcome. Wow. <laughs> and in your new fancy studio too. It's this very is a, nice. It's changed from last time. Isn't very it? Nice, yes. It's a little bit more relaxed. Is, yeah, I feel more relaxed. Yeah, yeah more nice. sofa-like. <laughs> um, so James, I know that, um, this is the season in Dubai right about now. There is so much happening, uh, but what's happening in your direction with the company? Yeah, so the last uh, three months have been crazy hectic. Um, obviously our season for shows runs from October to April, so this is our busiest time of the year. But the last week has really been focused on COP28. And we were invited to speak on a panel with our friends at Emirates Nature, WWF, and talk about how we can make our concerts greener and more sustainable. Mm. And how do you think that was going and how did it go? What did you resolve from that meeting? Because this is, this is the thing of what I learned about COP is, um, there's a lot of conversations, but then how do you actually move forward into making yeah, it more sustainable? Absolutely, and it's actually about doing. Mm. So we partnered with Emirates Nature, WWF, to really understand the science behind carbon emissions. And obviously, most of the carbon emissions in our business comes from the show itself. So we did a baseline study with Maroon 5 last May, and that research basically told us where those emissions were coming from and enabled us to then start to figure out how to make those changes. And we've seen a real step change in the way we do things. I mean, it's small steps, but it, it's significant. It might be the removal of straws, single-use plastics back of house. Uh, we recently put a bus service on from Dubai to Abu Dhabi. I was actually skeptical people would use it, but mm. now we're seeing large numbers of people traveling by bus to Abu Dhabi, and that's getting more cars off the road and less emissions. Mm. Now, now tell me about Live Nation's process, because a, a lot of event companies now are focusing very much on teaming up with greener venues. You know, that's very much a criteria when they're choosing mm. a venue for mm. one of their events. So specifically on that, you work with great venues across the city and of course in Abu Dhabi as well. What is your criteria? Is that something that you check on before, before you sign up a venue partner? It, it is. I mean, one of the things that we have to contend with is what they call scope three emissions. Mm -hmm. And they're emissions that are beyond our control. So usually they're coming from the airline or the venue. So we can't control, we can only influence. Mm. So for us, it is absolutely key we identify emission control from the venues that we utilize. And with Coca-Cola in Dubai or the Etihad Arena in Abu Dhabi, these are very new, very well designed and a much more environmentally friendly venues than they were 10, 20 years ago. So yeah. that is an important part to play. Mm, mm. While you're working with a lot of venues, you all obviously also work with a lot of artists, comedians and the like. Now, based on your experience with these uh, performers, how do you feel 
they feel about all these sustainable concerts, these green concerts. Is that something that they really want to be a part of or is it really more of the organizer side? Actually, it's all about collaboration, so we all have a part to play. Uh, as I said, I can't control the venue, but the venue can make an impact. So it's each person has a responsibility to play their part, and we're actually seeing a significant step change from the artist too. So when we send out an offer for an artist to perform, we include a number of variables that we will adjust or change. Maybe the introduction of electric cars, maybe uh, single-use plastics being removed from the stage and having reusable bottles. So we build into that offer those changes we're making. And we see the artists being highly receptive to it. And I think that's, that, that change is being driven from all angles, not just us, but it's coming from the artists and of course the fans who are the most important of all. Do you get any artists that are more uh, up with the sustainability than others? So like on their rider list is like, no, I'm only going to have this and so on. <laughs> yeah, I think that there's definitely like all of us, there are those that are more engaged than others. Uh, we've all seen how engaged Chris Martin and Coldplay is. Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, we had a fabulous uh, engagement with Maroon 5 at our baseline study. So there are, clearly there's going to be variances in, in how committed someone is. But we will all get there eventually. It's about change and it's about collaboration. And, and you know, we all work together to get to the same end goal. Yeah, James, earlier I was talking about how we need to use a different language to speak to the younger generation mm. to get through to them. Now, Dubai, of course, people of all ages are coming to the concerts, but specifically the younger generation, the Gen Zs. Uh, yeah. what, what is Live Nation doing? What are events doing in general to make sure they're reaching out to that demographic, but also educating them at the same time? That's a really good question, because actually for so many of our shows, take we got Wireless Festival coming back in uh, March next year. That's a 14 to 26 audience. Mm -hmm. So they're really important to us and they are more demanding about sustainability than any group perhaps. Wow. So it might be things such as removing the single use plastic bottles and putting water dispensers in that people can bring their reusable bottles. Mm. I've talked about the bus shuttle service. That, that made a big impact. I was a little skeptical, but we're now seeing three, four, five hundred people on a typical show using that bus service. Um, so I think I was talking in the green room uh, with the, the guys from the schools and GEMS and about how perhaps we should be talking more to the schools and understanding what they want to see. Mm. But it, there is change and, in it, and it is being driven from top and bottom. So I think the more we talk, the more we dialogue, the more we collaborate, the better it gets. Yeah, I love that. I don't know about you, but I remember the party bus when we would go on school trips <laughs> and everyone's singing at the back and the music's yeah. on and like yes. I, I think that's a wonderful idea i'll yeah. be well up for going yeah. from abu dhabi to dubai on a party bus and you know <laughs> it's not about the money that either we that's done at break even so the more people that use it the cheaper it gets and the easier it mm. gets mm. it's a great way to socialize on the way to a show indeed it's always more fun coming back <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> But with all these sustainable conversations that you're having, is there any event that's coming up or a, a lineup of events coming up where you're already putting into practice more of these sustainable practices? Actually, we started doing that right from the baseline study, uh, which was the Maroon 5 concert. And each time we do a new event, it gets a little bit bigger. So the first one is actually electric vehicles and we got a car company to sponsor us and all our vehicles changed overnight to electric. We've also started identifying the, the hotels with strong sustainability and carbon emission reduction schemes. So the hotel also plays a part. Um, and then in, in the venue, we've removed all single-use plastics from back of house. Um, and so each event, we're making changes. It doesn't happen overnight. It involves a lot of people, a lot of organizations, and a lot of stakeholders to work together. So every show, we want to get better and better at what we do. Any chance Chris Martin will come back? I'm sure he will. <laughs> 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 You're not saying yes or no. You're no, just I, like, I'm sure. I could be a politician. <laughs> <laughs> We're not letting James go just yet. But coming up, we meet the 14-year-old organizer behind the recent Gems Road to COP28 right here in the studio. So stay with us.